and you want everything Raptors. Nothing but Sportsnet. You're watching Rogers TV. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit Rogers.com for more details. Good morning, depending on when you're watching this. My name is Karen Ballack, and this is a conversation with Karen, and I'm so happy you could join us. Uh, it is a beautiful time of year. Just look outside, and it's so colorful. I mean, this is Canada, and this is Bruce County, and it is so pretty in the fall here. It's pretty in the winter, but it's pretty hazardous in the winter sometimes, too, but we still love Bruce County. And this time of year, there's lots of stuff going on, besides everybody getting sick, and I know a lot of people are getting sick, but now is all the time where we're going to talk about Christmas and Christmas parades, Christmas events, and someone we have here, you've seen her here before, is Shannon Woods, and she is in charge, or, or part of it, I'm not exactly sure what part of it you are, but it's for the Formosa, how do you, Country Christmas, Christmas. how is it? Yep, the Formosa, Formosa Christmas. Country Christmas, that's exactly it. Country so, Christmas. Yep. Yeah. And if you haven't been to it, my gosh, you have to go. I've been going since I found out about it um, for the last couple of years before COVID. And uh, it's amazing. The whole town gets involved. It's not just, you know, businesses. The whole town goes all out. And Shannon is part of this. Shannon, welcome and tell us all about it. Oh, thank you, Karen. And it's good to be back on the show again. Thank you so much for having me. Um, yes, I was saying Shannon was one of my very first guests when I started doing this. And she worked <laughs> for um, Sogging yeah, uh, Conservation. Yeah, Sogging Conservation back then. We talked about something completely different. But now she's into the Christmassy thing. As you can tell, she loves it. Mm -hmm. the, oh, very much so. That. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, sorry. Go ahead. Tell us about no, the No, no, that's fine. Um, we, we've been at this now for a number of years. It is an extension. You're right, Karen. We did the uh, Christmas in the Country for Saugeen for years and years. So then uh, we just slipped it over to Formosa, and the community has taken it over. And it's fantastic. It's just you know, one of those things, we all go to meetings and, you know, we all have those kinds of things to do. But when we get together for a meeting for this Christmas event, it we just laugh and we have a great time. It's a big committee. And like you said, the whole town, the village gets involved and that makes it, I think. Mm -hmm. And so we're pretty sure now that it is the largest in the region, the largest Christmas show in the region. So, really? Yep, it's a it's drive through as you know, yep. six kilometers of lights. I mean, it just goes on and on and on, and most of our displays and exhibits that we have, they're all hand done by our local artists, and they're fantastic. They do an amazing job. It's incredible the amount of talent that we've got in our local area. That sometimes you know we have no idea, you know, who mm -hmm. can paint or who can draw or who's a carpenter, you know, and who's an electrician and, and that kind of thing. So we're very fortunate because everybody just comes together for this. So it, they it all really pool makes it in, work well. They pool in everything that they know how to do. Oh, it's right. Fantastic. It is. Cause yeah. you're, you know, and it makes it so handy. Okay. You're the carpenter. Can you fix this? You know, you're the electrician. We can't get the lights to work, you know? So, I mean, it, it just makes it all come together. It really does, but we're pretty, yeah, we're pretty sure now it's the largest and actually in uh Kincardine area, Kincardine, Port Elgin, Southampton, all that area is in the top 10 of all the communities that come to this event and there are 83 different communities that are wow. represented in this event with over 8,000 people so well it, yeah, like i said one. every home is decorated they really get into it the the whole village is in the spirit and you can yeah. tell they enjoy yeah. having everybody there because you when i take the residents from work we can't get into the park because we're in a bus oh but yeah unfortunately but we stop and we look <laughs> and yes. we saw the skiers coming down the hill and then we just go around town and that is enough to excite the residents they the, the oh. oohs and ahs were just amazing i i 
I hate to say, it, but I think they like it more than Owen Sound because Owen Sound is getting repetitious. Yes, and and you can't yeah. do that. You've got to change yeah. it up all the time. And now, Karen, you'll be happy to know we can take the buses through, so <gasps> we can go through the park. Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, they'd be happy. There well, you go. Be so, yep, they've enlarged that little laneway. So they've been working on that for the last number of weeks. So that's been expanded oh. too because we get lots of people like that, right? Yeah. They just want to come out and look at the lights. And, mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, to see the look on their faces to us makes it worth it. It really oh. does. Yeah. I, I, you know, they, I put up a list for when we go to these events. I think within a couple hours, the list was full. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah. So we Fantastic. have fantastic, and I have to make sure I don't miss it. I missed it last year. Oh. I yes, I missed it by one day. We still got to drive around the village, which was just as good, but we didn't yeah. get to see what was in the park. And, I, and uh, that was that's yeah. the highlight. But I mean, yeah. we put the dem or the uh, exhibits and the displays that we have done. Um, we put them all together as an exhibit. So one exhibit will go here, one exhibit will go here. And so we do that all throughout the town. So if there's an empty lot, it's going to have an exhibit on it of yeah. some kind. And they're yeah. all unique. You know, I think that's the other thing is that, um, you know, the artists will get together. Okay, we're going to, you know, have one where Santa's here and there's a horse drawn carriage coming in. And so I think it makes it unique, not necessarily commercial, right? It's, yeah. it's mm -hmm. a unique, a homegrown kind of kind of feeling to it um but it's yeah. interesting karen because this year we have um well i don't know if anybody remembers but if you ever went to the home hardware in hanover they had uh 16 to 20 foot high santa and a snowman used to be mm -hmm. outside the doors and we have that now i so, saw that yeah so we are going to have i think santa's the 20 foot and the snowman wow. is the 16 foot. So we're going to have those there as well, too. So that is something that I think is going to draw a lot of attention this year for sure. So, yeah, I saw the posts on Facebook. I've been following them. Oh, um, and I hope, you. yeah, I hope other people follow them before. Time. And we got lots of time because it starts at the end of November, right? Give November the, the 30th. That's right. Exactly. November yeah. the 30th. That's right till December the 3rd. So four nights. Yeah. five to nine and uh and it gets busy so it really yeah. does so come early and and uh, get there if you can now it's donation only there's there's no fee it's donation only and we feel that way to give everybody an opportunity to come yeah so you yeah. don't feel pressured that you know you have to have this or that so yeah. and i think it works for us it really does and people just come through and it, it's astounding you know the the one thing karen that amazes me is i'd say 70 percent of the vehicles and i'm not exaggerating will have their pets with them i've never yeah. seen so many dogs in all my life <laughs> <laughs> oh really yeah that's good but, but it's a family affair yeah yeah that's well, right exactly yeah. and uh so it's it's really good i'm sorry my dog is barking in the background but uh, oh, I anyway, got mine locked up <laughs> oh uh, that's what i should have done with this one yes yeah. but no it takes a lot of work though we start full time after thanksgiving and we're out every day, yeah. every single day. So putting things up. And we're how many all volunteers going... do you have? Oh my god. Yeah, goodness. how many are Probably. there? Yeah. Um upwards of oh, I'd say with the entire event and everything, we've probably got upwards of two hundred and fifty. Yeah, it's amazing. So it, for this little community, we managed to get it done. But we've got volunteers from from all over the place. We're at Chesley and Walkerton and Hanover, um, Ayton, Newstead, you name it. We've got volunteers coming in. So, But the one thing that we always like to try to tell yeah. people is that the whole idea is to have fun. That's yeah. the whole thing. Because you get a full course meal as well at lunchtime when you volunteer because you're outside all day. And so we try to treat the volunteers right. That I think that's got so much to do with it. Oh, I would think so. I, I, I'm sure you have a lot of uh, teenagers that get involved, young adults, we'll say. Yeah, and, and actually we'd like more, right? Yeah. It's good because we're hoping that they will gradually take over the event. So, yeah, yeah. and they need community hours, so it works out fine that way. That's right, yeah. Now, yeah. this is a committee just for the uh, event itself like yeah good question not part of lions is. or anything like that it, you, nope. you guys are just do it yourself yep and we meet all throughout the year 
So, oh. I mean, beginning in January, we will be meeting again about next year. So, it because as you can imagine, it takes a lot of planning and yeah. you do have to refresh it. You have to mm -hmm. add something new. You have to change things around. Yeah. Um, the other thing we've got new this year is that we approached local artists in the area and said, would you like an opportunity? Here's a four by four piece of plywood. Would you like an opportunity to draw out any kind of an image? It's up to the artist as to what you think Christmas is about. So oh. it's incredible the response that we had for that. We've yeah, got a I could see artists. that. Oh, yeah. I could see that, yeah. So that's going to be our new Christmas card lane. So that's going to be kind of cool. like what Christmas means to me. Well, yeah, Something like that. Yeah. And and you wouldn't believe the diversity of artwork that we're getting. Mm -hmm. it, it's just really cool to see. It really is. So I think bringing in the local artists too has has helped that. So I mean, it's all about community. So why not show off community? So oh, absolutely. And for it to be a village like Formosa, because it's not like a big like a, a King Carden, Port Elgin, for some yep. a little village like Vermosa to have such a big event that yep. so many people talk about. Yeah. It, it's it's amazing. And I'm really thrilled that we get to go through on the bus this year. That yes, really there you go. Exciting. Exactly. It was funny because we were just talking about that today. So oh. good timing for sure. But yeah, we're trying oh, yeah. to make it accessible to everybody. And every year we have different ideas of what we're going to do. So, and, and and then you don't feel like you're coming to the same event, yeah. right? And we've always got something new that's coming on. So, and, and we've yeah. got a lot of artists that make it. Well, why don't we do this? Or why don't we do that? Or, you know, so that's great. Let's go for it. Let's change it's it up. So. Fresh input. Yes. Yeah, and you and know, so key. Something that we noticed uh, when we went through the last time were a lot of the houses have such unique displays. And like mm -hmm. I've never seen some of these light fixtures that they they put out there. They're amazing. They're beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And, and it helps it, too that we have a competition. You. Yeah. Oh, it, do it you? Oh. Yes, oh, we do. So good. that kind of runs neck and neck. So that helps Karen because we, yeah. you know, and then they get prizes for first, second, third, and and that kind of thing. But it's interesting that you've noted that. That's that's good yeah. for sure. Uh, uh, you know, we we said like, where are they getting this stuff because they are so unique. Yeah. And it, I know we went uh, during the village. We went way up on a hill. I don't know for most of that well, but I remember we were out. It seemed like we were out in the boonies, and all the houses were still decorated. Yeah. Like they were decorated yeah. everywhere. It's it's yeah. just amazing. You guys do a fantastic job. I, I, I have to give you kudos. I wish I'd known about it sooner. Because oh, I didn't well, thank you. I yeah, I didn't know about it. I think maybe just because I met you. Yeah. <laughs> that uh, that that's how I found out about it. Because that I it's right. just fantastic. And I hope everybody gets a chance to go. Like you said, it's only four days. Mm -hmm. but it's jam-packed and even if you can't get in the park if mm -hmm. you can't make it in the four days and or you forget like me and book a bus the wrong day there's still lots to see there's still so much there like yeah. just, we just yeah. drove around town and we saw everything yeah. everything and even is. even with the bus we parked right outside the park and we could oh, still nice. see things yeah, yeah, like I said, we saw the skiers coming down the mountain. Oh yes, you can see that hill. <laughs> it makes a big impression. Oh yes. yeah, it, it was yeah. it was impressive, and I love hearing them because with seniors, this is like you know being a kid again, which is oh, what they and, really need. And that's what yeah. it's all about. I think yeah. you know when we organize things and come up with different ideas, part of yeah. you has to be a kid to really kind of oh. get into it. And yeah. uh, and I think that's what makes it. But I think this event has really put Formosa on the map. I think, you know, I would think so. Yeah. yeah. Forget about yeah. the beer thing. Yeah. <laughs> Beer's yeah, gone. Right. yeah. <laughs> we don't talk about the Formosa beer anymore. Now we talk about the Formosa Christmas event. There you go. There yeah, you go. And, so it, it does help. Yeah. And, uh, well, and we're, we're just thankful for all the support. Oh yeah. We're coming on the 30th. I got in there. Fantastic. Right <laughs> and on the 30th, I wasn't okay. going to take any chances of missing it this year because it was so disappointing to the residents. I felt so bad. So oh, we're coming no. on the 30th. Yeah. Sounds and and good, like I Karen. said, I, I think I got a whole bus full, you know. Perfect. To, yeah. Uh, you never know. We may have to ooh, see about bringing another bunch and another bus. But we're, we're very excited about it. Very Way excited. Way to go. Way to, yeah, well, we're excited guys, to have you. You guys do a wonderful job, and I would love everybody to know just how hard you work on this because it's—I I can't even imagine what goes into it—the man hours, 
Oh, and phenomenal. Just phenomenal. But, but like I said, we all get along so well. And, yeah. and that's what makes it. You know, it really does. When we all get together, we just have a lot of fun. And that's really what helps bring it together. Um, yeah. 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 So we're, we're happy that everybody comes out to support it. We're just happy. Yeah. Let's hope you do get some uh, fresh blood in there for the people that have been on it. How long has it been going on? In Formosa, this will be the fourth year. So fourth not year. that long in Formosa. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, but it really, was no. in uh, Hanover, of course, for, oh, 20 some years. So it was there for quite some time. Wow. So it's it's a it's a great job, and I I would love for everybody to see it because it's uh, especially after COVID, everybody yeah. needs a big boost yeah. like that. And in the stores, everything's Christmas now. You notice? Yeah. That? Oh yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. That's everything's right. Christmas. So yeah. we're getting in the mood. You know, yes. we're getting in the Christmas spirit. So we still got a month to go before we can come down there and see you. But we're really looking forward to it. Oh, so good. everybody, well, you gotta go. Don't even oh, thanks, just, Karen. Yeah. yeah. And it was great seeing you again, Jeff. Yes, we, we had too, our funny Karen. hats Thank on. You so much. Yes. Yeah, we had the funny hats on last year. That's so I did. Yes. So I had yeah. to be sure I wore mine today. But thank you so much for inviting me to the show. Oh, thank you for coming. And it's always great to talk to you. You're such a sweetheart. Oh, and well, tell, thank you. Tell all your volunteers we think they're great. And we think they do a great job. Okay. Will do, Thanks. Karen. Absolutely. Okay, you take great. care. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Shannon. Okay, talk thank you. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, okay we're going to take a quick break, and then we have another guest. And... This is something that you want to think about during the holidays because we all eat too much, don't we? And we eat all bad stuff. So we're going to be right back. And don't go away. Thanks. Okay, Mark. Jasmine's here, I see. Welcome to the traditional, ancestral, unceded territory of the Stalo people. The Stalo are people of the river. I'm so thankful for the courage and resiliency of our ancestors who lived on this land since time immemorial. Each of us have gifts from the Creator, and our Creator has a plan and purpose to be fulfilled in our territory. As we embrace our traditional teachings, we can lead the next generation into the fullness of what our Creator designed. Our shared history reveals a broken relationship, but as all Canadians commit to hear truth, acknowledge injustice, we can learn to walk in our traditional way, let's not, with a good heart and a good mind. Then all of our lives will be enriched. Kwasai. October 5th, 2014, my daughter was hit by a train. She was walking along the sides of the tracks and it shattered her world. <laughs> Hello, Gray County. I'm your warden, Brian Milne. Want to be the first to know about news, services, and decisions in your community? Watch Gray County Council meetings live from the comfort of your living room right here on Rogers TV, Gray County. I hope everybody decides to go out to Formosa. You gotta go out there and see what's going on. Now, uh, this time of year, we, we tend to eat a lot of bad stuff. I mean, it's good, but it's not necessarily good for us. And when you're eating the wrong things, you start feeling a little sluggish or just not quite right. And nutrition is the thing that we got to talk about today. And to me, it's, it's interesting because your nutrition means so much. And we have Jasmine. Blackwood, Blackwood Nutrition. Hello, Jasmine. Thanks so much for having me today. Oh, thanks for coming on. And as you can see, Jasmine is like the picture of health. <laughs> she, she is, she's bubbly. She's cute as a thing. And uh, she, you've got so much energy. Jasmine and I work together. That's how we know each other. And uh, when I found out she was a nutritionist, I thought we, we got to get her and find out what we got to do right this winter i mean we want to eat bad things but we want to be able to not be sluggish and that's part of it i guess isn't it yes yes yeah so jasmine you're an rn right yeah I'm rn an or that's right 
Yeah, yeah. And now Blackwood Nutrition is um, all about just eating the right balance of things, correct? Sort of. It goes a little bit deeper than that. And I'll kind of walk you through like the whole picture of what I do, where I help. People. Yeah. And some of you may have seen some of her posts on Facebook. If you're friends, if you're not, you should, should be a friend, Blackwood Nutrition, because there's some interesting, some really cute ones. <laughs> she has some cute little uh, short videos that, that uh, talk about different things. Now, what made you get into this nutrition thing? Well, so I've been a registered nurse for, I want to say 17 years now, and I've always had a lot of interest in healthy living and feeling good and feeling energized. And the reason I really got into the nutrition piece is because I struggled with my hormones and my metabolism for a lot of years of my life where I was overweight, didn't have energy, I had horrible periods and felt sluggish and just didn't feel happy in my body. And so I decided to learn about how to balance my hormones. And then later I decided to go back to school so I could teach other women how to do the same so that they could feel really good in their bodies too. So it's really, you know, the whole thing kind of started as a weight loss thing, but then it turned into this bigger thing, you know, how we can feel incredible in our bodies when we balance our hormones you know yes we lose weight but we also feel energized and and we feel just happier in life and more confidence yeah yeah because that does make a difference when your nutrition is bad you do feel sluggish uh things are not quite working and <clears throat> i mean women's hormones uh because they are so messed up i mean men's have their hormones but women have a lot more it seems that can get messed up and it's something that they really need to think about um especially when they're younger and just getting into having kids and stuff like that because you want to start your kids off now you were you were trained to be a nutritionist yeah so i'm a metabolism and um hormone nutritionist uh, so I um, went back to school to become a registered holistic nutritionist. And I specialized in that area. Yeah. Oh, oh so you, that's what you do. You become registered. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure um, we hadn't had that much time to talk about. It. I just know that you do this. So, okay. Give us a little bit of a breakdown. Now you've talked about women, how they have uh, hormonal issues and how they can fix, them, especially during um uh, well, I guess menopause that you would even have at that, but during their periods, menstruating and stuff like that. So what sort of things are the, I, I'm sure it's really broad, but what sort of things are affecting our hormones to make them not react to each other? Yeah, totally. So I think just to break it down a little bit, right? So the reason why it can be so much more difficult for women to first of all, lose weight, right, and feel really good in their bodies is because you're right, their hormones are constantly changing more so than men's, right? Men's don't really yeah, change yeah. a whole lot, right? And so when we look at hormones specifically, um, any symptom that we're feeling in our body, right, whether it is we have some extra pounds or our periods are really painful or, you know, PMS symptoms, headaches, migraines, low libido, any of those things um, is a sign of, hey, something's off and your body's looking for balance. And so when we look at our hormones and why they matter so much is because they almost run every process in our bodies, right, from sleep and energy, our hunger levels, our female cycle focus, libido, blood sugar, so many things, right? And when hormones are imbalanced, that's when we start to feel different kinds of symptoms. And when we kind of look at, well, what causes hormonal imbalances, right? And just to kind of, in, in a nutshell, I mean, there's so many things, but the biggest driver of hormonal imbalance is going to be inflammation in the body. Um, other things that maybe I can talk about a little bit more later is your gut health and your liver health, right? Is your body able to get rid of excess hormones in the body like estrogen, for example, right? Mm. What's your gut health like? Do you have leaky gut? Is there a yeast overgrowth? Too much bad bacteria, not enough good bacteria. Um, you know, there's so many different things that we need to look at when it comes to hormones. And um, we really need to learn as women specifically how to work with our cycles so that we know how to fuel our body so that we can feel really good. Yeah. So it would start uh, because of young girls starting menstruating. Um, it would start right back then. And young girls are probably well known for eating a lot of junk. I would think, you know, they, they eat fast food and things like that. They're not thinking about nutrition at that stage, are they? Yeah, well, I would say probably, um, you know, the earlier we can start with learning how to nourish our bodies, the better. 
And, you know, just to kind of speak to, you know, you had mentioned menopause earlier and then kind of girls when they start menstruating. And, and the whole thing is that there has been this misconception out there where, you know, women have kind of been led to believe that, you know what, painful periods are normal, heavy periods are normal. Um, these things are just what happens as women, whereas that's really not true. The, the thing is that we just haven't been given the tools as to what we can do naturally to support our bodies. Yeah. Now, what would be the um, worst thing that would uh, affect our body? Is it something, for instance, sugar? Is okay. that a big thing that messes our body up? Okay, let's talk about that for a minute. So yeah. going back to the main driver of hormonal imbalance is going to be inflammation, right? So inflammation yeah. in itself is what's going to cause a lot of that havoc, right? It has to do with our cortisol levels, our blood sugar levels, and so on. Um, but when we specifically look at the foods that cause inflammation in the body, there's top three. So absolutely sugar, gluten, and dairy are the ones that do cause inflammation. And so it's not so much as, hey, I'm going to eat gluten-free bread or I'm going to eat dairy-free cheese because so many times those kinds of foods, even though they're advertised as healthy, they're loaded in all kinds of junk, like artificial yeah. stuff, you know, fillers and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. So we need to learn about more of those whole foods and anti-inflammatory foods that we can pull into our diets to help balance our hormones and flush out inflammation. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, some of the things I always, anything that's plant-based, I worry about because uh, you're not putting the things in that we're supposed to have, then what is in there? That is, so I, I, I really don't like anything plant-based um, because it's a lot of chemicals. I would think it's... Uh, for instance, you want a veggie burger, you can make a veggie burger that's going to be a lot better for you than what you would buy, you know, I, I would think. And there, it's easy to make. Yeah. Uh, but the thing that you said that surprises me is dairy. Now, is that just people that have an intolerance to dairy or is it everybody? Because dairy is something we all need, isn't it? Um, it's not something that we need, no. no? Um, and I think, again, that's another misconception because I feel like a lot of us, and I mean, I used to think the same thing, it's for the calcium, right? Yeah. Um, whereas in reality, calcium is so much harder for the body to absorb when it comes from animal products. Yeah. Um, look at our calcium intake, you know, really awesome um, place to get it from is chia seeds, um, wheatgrass, right? There's different plant-based ways that we can get it. Um, and, you know, to answer your question, is, is all dairy bad, quote unquote, it depends on the person, but for people who can, you know, um, absorb and manage dairy products well, we always want to look at the ones that aren't super processed, right? Like you want to go mm -hmm. for the ones that are, you know, is it organic? Where did it come from? How was it sourced? Because it does cause inflammation in the body. And, mm -hmm. you know, I've worked with so many women who have tried to even cut gluten, cut dairy and sugar, but they're still not losing weight, let's say, right? They still don't have the energy. And again, that's where we go a step deeper and looking at what's your liver doing, right? Is it able mm -hmm. to clear out toxins? What's your gut health doing? What are your adrenals and your thyroid? Look at that bigger picture. Yeah. Now, uh, gluten, getting on that subject, I hear a lot of people uh, eliminating gluten. Um, but is it something that everybody should think about or do you have specific symptoms that you sh that makes you think about hey maybe there's something in this gluten that is not working for me yeah so gluten is one of those topics i feel that's very controversial and there's lots of yeah on it my personal take on it my opinion is that gluten is something that shouldn't be in any diet because there are lots of studies out there that show that it does cause leaky gut over time now leaky gut what that is is um the intestinal walling wall starts to have little punctures and what happens is um, undigested food and toxins can get out into the bloodstream. And that's when we can feel a lot of the symptoms, like I mentioned earlier, you know, headaches, feeling tired, um, not being able to lose weight, so many different things that can pop up. And so for the work that I do with my clients, when we start pulling out, the first thing we do is we start pulling out inflammatory foods. And so gluten is one of those really big ones. And it is so incredible to see those shifts that my clients are experiencing where they're no longer pulling in, you know, like gluten-free bread or like dairy-free processed stuff, but instead real whole foods. And, you know, two, three, four weeks in, they're starting to really see that shift in energy, feeling so much better. Inches are starting to come off and it's really, really great to see. And it's all real food, right? It's getting away yeah. from the processed junk. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm seeing a lot more gluten-free products available where maybe 10 years ago you didn't see that. But uh, everywhere you go, pretty much all the stores, they have a section that is gluten-free, which yeah, is good. So to add, yeah, but to add to that, too, when you do have the gluten-free section, make sure you check your ingredients, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I almost guarantee you that most of them will have stuff in there that you don't want in there. because that's Yeah, and that's just it. How do you know? This is how, how do you know what? what stuff should be and what shouldn't be in there. Uh, and that's why somebody like you, a nutritionist, would be able to tell a person, for instance, if you're having weight issues, which I've fought my whole life. I think I was born, I'm short, I'm a whole 4'11", and have <laughs> battled my weight my whole life. And, I mean, uh, there could be something that I'm taking in that is not helping me, helping my metabolism. Because you've seen me at work. I mean, I go nonstop. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm, so many people have said to me I should weigh 100 pounds because I do go nonstop. I'm just like I'm a quick looker. But it's it's very hard for me. So there's something in my nutrition that is not a good nutrition for me, I would think. Right, right. But then again, too, you know, I feel so often people will say, you know what, I'm eating healthy, I'm moving my body, like I should, like, I should be able to lose weight, like, why is mm -hmm. this not working for me? And then again, because we're not peeling back those layers, we're not looking at what is going on in your body specifically, right? What's going on with your adrenals, your thyroid, your gut health, your liver, and so on, right? And then from there, we figure out what it is that you need to do so that your body can find that balance and start release weight and start to feel more energized. Yeah. Yeah. And I, uh, thyroid is a big thing. Um, I know that in um, my family, uh, there are a few that have had thyroid issues, uh, one overactive, one underactive. And um, it does have a lot to do with, with your general health, doesn't it? Your thyroid. Yeah, it absolutely does. So the thyroid is the master of your metabolism, meaning that if that's out of whack, it's going to cause a lot of problems. But the really good thing is that essentially your body just your body just wants balance, right? And yeah. there's little things that we can start pulling. And so for example, for a thyroid that's not functioning, okay, well, let's get some more selenium into your diet, two Brazil nuts a day, perfect place to start. Let's sprinkle some mm -hmm. kelp onto your dinners, right? Which is a sea, a sea vegetable, right? Start doing that. So there's lots of little tweaks that we can do slowly over time, and that's when we can start to feel better. Yeah. So it's not a fact of being a vegetarian um, because we do need um, as much as I, I mean, I try not to eat too much meat, especially processed meat, only because I love animals. But uh, um, it, I guess I do. I do. I I. I, especially, you know, you have animals and you think, how could I ever eat that? And you see a cow with those big eyelashes and, you know, it's it's something you think about. Uh, and we don't need that in our body because we don't know what those animals are being fed, do we? So when we look at meat or not meat, and again, it's a controversial topic, right? So I yeah. was vegan for three years and it didn't serve me very well. Um because I kind of went through the whole thing of, you know, being humane with the animals and things like that. But yeah. um, what I believe to be very effective is for some meat to be included in the diet, because there are really, really important vitamins and minerals in there that the body requires. So, you know, mm -hmm. two to three times a week is kind of a good rule of thumb for most people. Of course, I can't give personal, you know, what everyone should be doing, but that's just pers like a, a rule of thumb kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. But you are right. Like plants are incredibly powerful. The plant proteins, right? Antioxidants, phytonutrients, all the good stuff that your body absolutely needs. But again, when we're kind of looking at when well, I'm doing all these things, it's really we need to unpack and think about well, why is my metabolism sluggish, right? A real right. reason is women are not eating enough carbs, right? If you don't have enough carbs, your hormones go out of whack. <laughs> Taking birth control is a big one. Overeating the wrong foods, not sleeping enough is a big one. Um, you know, running on caffeine, zero calorie drinks. Like when we look at these artificial sweeteners, for sure, oh. inflammatory foods that we talked about. And another big one that's missed a lot is just nutrient deficiency. B vitamins is huge. Magnesium is huge. Um, and yes. you know, even medications themselves, uh, especially sleep and mood medications, birth control, like I mentioned, all that stuff can absolutely impact our metabolism. So it's not just this one thing while I'm eating healthy. Okay, well, what is actually going on kind of on a deeper level, if that makes sense? 
So vitamins are still good to take, even when you're doing uh, improving your nutrition, um, because I know Canadians don't get enough vitamin D. We know that for a fact, right? Um, I mean, my doctor tells me, sit out in the sun, even in the winter, for 15 minutes, which is good. I mean, it feels good. But I know that magnesium is very important. Um, and the only way I knew that is because my husband was critically low of magnesium and passed out. We had no idea it had anything to do. I mean, who thinks of magnesium? Yeah. So magnesium is, you're right. It's one of those things that's so <coughs> powerful. Um, I personally take it before bed and it also helps with sleep. It helps balance your blood sugar. It's like this golden, I call it like a golden supplement. Very, very important. Yeah. Um, and then when we look at supplements overall, just for kind of talking about that, again, it kind of depends on the person as to what to take and being really mindful of making sure it's a quality supplement you're taking and that it's something that your body actually requires right now. Because I mean, there's thousands of supplements out there. Like, how do you know which one is right for you, right? And when we look at multivitamins, again, looking at those ingredients, what's in there? Is it is it a quality one? Absolutely. Now, is there a, an ingredient in our processed foods, which we we don't want to eat processed foods, but in some cases, it's very hard to get away from it. Is there an ingredient um, that you really should watch for and avoid? I would say sugar is the top one. <laughs> yes. Uh, I saw a little posting of sugar, how much sugar is in all these things. And I've told people this before, a can of Coke has so much sugar. I think they said like 16 cubes of sugar. And I don't think people realize that. And they say, well, it's healthier than the diet free. But I mean, you got to weigh that out too because of all the chemicals that are in a diet uh, pop, you know, is it better than 16 cubes of sugar? I guess the answer is don't drink them. Yeah. That's the thing too, right? Cause then we can look at the diet zero or zero Coke. Okay. Well, yeah. Junk that's in there that our body doesn't want. Right. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Because they're going to affect our hormones too. I guess, um, I don't know, water. <laughs> it's, I, like, I, I, I oftentimes like to, um, there's these cute little drinks you can make with like sparkling water and adding like yeah. and infused vegetables into it. And there's cute little recipes that I have that can make it a little bit more exciting than just drinking plain water. Cause that can be a little bit boring sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I, I really have to force myself to drink water. I've just never been a water kind of yeah. person. And I, I do, I have to force myself. I have to force myself to drink anything through the day. Cause I get busy and I forget, I forget to drink, which is bad because water is a good, is something good for flushing your system too. Yeah, totally. It helps detoxify the body. So a really good thing that um, I always like to recommend to my clients that I personally do is in the morning, first thing I drink is a freshly squeezed lemon, some Himalayan sea salt, some fresh ginger, um, and then, you know, drink that before my breakfast. It helps rehydrate your cells in the morning. It helps, you know, vitamin C, flushes out toxins. Um, it's a really great way to start your day for sure. Yeah. Now we talked about uh, um, women that are in the menstrual type cycle. What about uh, menopausal women? Are there th extra things that she should be looking at? Um, uh, does she have to avoid even more? No, I think it depends on the person and that's where it gets really personalized, right? Like I feel yeah. like, so the way that I work with my clients too, you know, we have this main protocol that, that I use for all of my clients, but then there's that personalized component where we look at exactly, well, what are your symptoms? How are you mm -hmm. feeling, right? Looking at the different body systems, you know, digestive system, intestinal system, endocrine system, and so on. And then we can determine what's going on and coming up with an actual plan. So, you know, with menopause, sure, there's some other things to kind of be aware of. However, I really think it depends on the person, which is why to me, it's so important to have that personalized approach, right? Yeah. Where you then can come up with a plan to figure out what does, what's your body lacking right now, right? What does your body need? What is it craving so that it can find that balance? It almost sounds like, um, uh, like an astrologer, <laughs> how they, you know what I mean? When you see their charts, it's almost like, uh, having to read a big chart and you're the one that's going to dissect it to see what is going on with it. Is that kind of what it is? I guess it's, it's based on symptoms that the person is feeling and then we categorize yeah. them and then I can yeah. figure out where those hormonal imbalances and body systems lie. Yeah. yeah. Sort of. But you want to make sure they don't uh, steer away from 
traditional medicine too, which is sometimes what people will do. You being an art and you, you know how important it is yeah. to uh, seek medical attention when you need it, professional, and not yeah. just go buy uh, vitamins, which some totally. people do. Yeah. Totally. Now, something that I was going to ask you about, uh, a friend of mine bought a jug of silver water. Mm-hmm. Have you ever heard of that? The silver, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I she asked me to, to read up on it and uh, to find out. Uh, there was no way I was going to try anything of that until I knew exactly what it was about. But it seems to be something that people are talking about is this silver water. And I, I don't understand. I know we use silver for wounds. Yeah. Uh, so putting the silver in our body like that, is that, what is that all about? The silver drinking? I don't have enough knowledge about, I haven't, yeah. heard of it, but I've heard of it. Um, yeah. I wouldn't really recommend unless you've actually done your research and you feel really good about it. Right. Yeah. Back it. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I saw, uh, I've heard good and bad uh, when I've looked it up, but I mean, who do you go by? I've just looked it up at different, uh, like Mayo Clinic and things like that. And um, there are two different versions of, you know, whether it's good, whether it's bad. And I just wondered if it was part of those, th- one of the things that gets into our body that maybe is not good. Right. Hard to say, yeah. because it's not something naturally you would get in your food, right? Silver? Yeah. Like there's nothing in your food that would have silver in it. What is there? Yeah. I, I can't really comment on that because I don't really know about the silver drink, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. It's just something that came up, and I I thought, because I'm going to have to ask Jasmine about that because Absolutely. it's... Yeah, because this person asked me about it, and they bought a big jug of it for fifty dollars, and said, "Yeah, yeah, it's going to cure everything." I, said, I don't know. We got to look into this, and uh, there was a lot of um, back and forth on people saying, "Yeah, it's great," and some saying, "No, it's not so great." So I, I wondered if it was part of your your report. Rep- were part of your knowledge <laughs> about that okay now we talk about uh women the uh, young women menstruating up until they have menopause what about men yeah, men don't have that. yeah they don't have as many hormones as women it seems sorry mark <laughs> and it seems like uh they don't have the same sort of issues that women have yeah we'll say yeah. So for men's hormones specifically, I can't really speak to that too much because that's not my specialty. I definitely, you know, specialize in women's health. Women. Only, so I can't really tap into that too much. Um, but I just wanted to quickly go back to what you had mentioned earlier about, you know, the importance of um, traditional medicine and then kind of, you know, the natural side of things. And, you know, I, I do agree that, um, you know, medication can be super helpful for people, right? And they can be absolutely life-saving and it can be absolutely fantastic. However, I do very, very strongly feel that very often these this step is being missed where we're not looking at the root causes for why a person is feeling, uh, feeling different symptoms, right? Because when we look at, Okay, I have a headache, I'm feeling nauseated, I have pain, right? Doctors are are trained and very good at treating symptoms, right? To help the person improve their quality of life, right? However, the missing piece often is that we're not looking at, well, why does the person have a headache? Why are they in pain? Why can't they lose weight? You know, why is their thyroid struggling? Like, why? And that's what I do with my clients. I I kind of dissect it, right? Look at all these different symptoms the person is feeling. And, you know, I've had clients who um, just just now, now actually have a woman graduating from my program and she was going to be put on thyroid medication. And it's for the first time in a decade that her thyroid levels have, have come back normal and she's not on medication. Um, you know, a couple of months ago, I had a woman who came to me, you know, for weight loss, energy, other things, but she was going to be put on a new medication to manage her cholesterol. And she was like, no, I, I want to figure this out. See if there's a natural way to do this. We started working together and she never had to go on that medication. What I'm trying to say here is that the power of food is so incredibly, um, it's amazing, right? And so many people just don't know about it. And it's not about eating crazy foods that, you know, are inconvenient, you know, things that take hours in the kitchen to prepare. It's truly just these small, simple little things that we add into our day. But the most important thing is knowing what your imbalances are, what your body is lacking, right? Where your body is depleted of, pulling out inflammation, balancing the blood sugar, and then coming up with the plan to replete the body. That's, you know, that's the important piece. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So when you get a client, a new client, 
what is it that you go through with that client? Yeah, yeah. You talk about symptoms. Is that the idea? Yeah. So um, when clients come into the Hormone Harmony Solution, we spend an hour to an hour and 15 minutes together and we go through everything. Their, all their different symptoms they're feeling, their lifestyle, what it is that they're doing, their foods. Um, and we come up with a realistic plan. And it's not so much if here's a plan, off you go. But I love the one-on-one -on -one connection with my clients because a one size fits all doesn't work. I couldn't, you know, I'm not the type of coach that here's a meal plan, go lose 20 pounds, right? Because that's not mm -hmm. going to work. I teach my clients the foundations to pull into their life so that they can use it every day. So it's easy to fit in, right? Like I have moms that have three kids and work full-time jobs. I have, you know, my clients are all very busy. So that first initial assessment, we really look at well, what's going on. What are the symptoms you're feeling? And then I categorize them to see where the imbalances are. And then we start pulling in, um, things that the person can do to help support different areas in their body. And the amazing thing is most of my clients see a shift in their energy. Energy is a really big thing. People come to yeah. like within two to four weeks, like their energy is just changing dramatically, right? Cause we're pulling out inflammation and adding anti-inflammatory foods to their diet. Um, you know, and then clients who have been struggling to lose weight for decades, we start working together, but instead of I'm going to be perfect and do it all today, it's like every week we start pulling in more and more and more. And, you know, mm -hmm. one of my clients, eight weeks, she's lost a size already mm -hmm. just by, you know, not starving herself. We don't do calories. We don't do macros, literally just teaching you how to nourish your body. And it's really, really amazing. So it's not, it's, they're not doing it by diet because that's always, that's like a four letter word, isn't it? You know, yeah, when, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's an idea of, of just changing uh, what you're eating. Uh, and I imagine uh, say eating an apple with an orange, how they, they could affect each other. So, uh, you know, things like that. Yeah. So it's more, so I keep things super simple. So the, the main thing, one of the main things that I like to teach is how do we nutrient stack, right? How do we, um, make our meal in a way so it doesn't increase our blood sugar. We just want our blood sugar balanced throughout the day. That's the key piece. And so mm -hmm. instead of looking at different foods that may or may not go well together, it's more about, okay, I'm going to pick a protein. I'm going to choose a healthy fat. I'm going to add some fiber and I'm going to add my, my carb, right? Which could be a starchy veggie, a fruit, a complex carb. And that in itself is a beautifully balanced meal. You do that at breakfast, lunch, dinner, and at your snack. And that is a really, really great starting point. Now, when you mention carbs, because that is always the big no-no, everybody thinks when it comes to losing weight. Um, of course, sugar is always the big one, but it's carbs. And, you know, they say carbs are the ones that make you sluggish. And you're saying uh, that carbs are good, the right kind of carbs, I would think. Yes, that's yeah. the key. So yeah. here's the thing, right? Your your body absolutely requires a balance of all three macros, okay? And so absolutely the unsupportive carbs are going to be, you know, lots of bread and donuts and, and granola bars and like stuff that's heavily processed, right? Yeah. Like the good kind of carbs that your body loves is going to be quinoa, brown rice, carrots, beets, pineapple, like all of the, the good stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So does it mean you can never have a pizza again? No. It, what it means is you want to go about 80, 20, 80% 80 of the time we want to stick to our foods that we know we're going to fuel our body. And then that mm -hmm. leaves room for, you know, 10 to 20% of the time, Hey, I'm going to go to the birthday party, have some pizza or, or, you know, some birthday cake, whatever, because it doesn't matter because you're consistent the other times. Yeah. And I think a lot of people don't realize that, uh, they're, fruit and vegetables have carbs, not just bread and all that bad stuff. Because, uh, for instance, like you said, carrots, who would think carrots, would have carbs but anything full of sugar i i guess would naturally like anything grows naturally with sugar is a carb yeah so so by saying you know i know because i used to be the same way I'd be like oh i'm just not going to eat any more carbs but it ends up in this vicious cycle of cutting carbs your body craves it you overeat you gain everything yes. back, right it's like that cycle and when we lose weight by cutting carbs we're actually losing water weight and muscle mass for the most part we're not actually losing true body fat. And, and that's the other misconception, right? It's like, yeah, I'm going to lose 10 pounds this month. I'm going to do it. Okay, maybe you do, but it's always going to come back and more, right? Yeah. Because you haven't actually lost fat. True fat loss takes time. 
And I just like to say, you know, it takes about 12 to 16 weeks for your body for hormones to find balance, which is why my program is 16 weeks, right? To get to help my clients really absorb, you know, understand all the information that I'm teaching them in a really simple way so they can actually create this new lifestyle for themselves. Yeah. So it's a 16 week program, uh, getting back to how you uh, react with your your clients. Uh, So somebody would come to you and say, you know, I'm feeling sluggish or I would like to have less irritating uh, menstrual periods or um, as I'm going through menopause, how can I not have these symptoms that come with menopause so that they're not as bad? Because uh, so everybody uh, has different menstrual uh, cramps, things like that. The symptoms, same with menopause. Some people will have hot flashes, some won't have any. Uh, but they have other symptoms. So I guess the idea is to take that person, find out what it is that's bothering them, like weight, um, energy, things like that. Uh, uh, what, now, this just came to mind now. Would it have anything to do, the nutrition, with your skin too? Like a, a teenager, yeah, having uh, skin issues, like the acne sort of thing. Because I know... Uh, because like I said, kids are eating a lot of garbage type stuff. It's it's a fast food thing. I mean, it's what they do with their friends. And um, but I would I would expect it to have something to do with their complexion. Absolutely. And I actually work with a lot of women inside my program as well who come to me, you know, for yes, weight loss, energy, but also skin issues. And when we look at the skin, our skin is really a reflection of what's happening inside our bodies. And most of the time, uh, when we have imbalances in our skin, it is because of poor gut health. So different things happening, you know, like I mentioned, yeast overgrowth, leaky gut is a big one, dysbiosis, inflammation. Um, It also has to do with your liver health, right? The ability to clear out those toxins, to clear out excess hormones. Um, It's quite phenomenal. It does take a little bit longer for skin to clear up, but usually there's a a profound difference, like eight, 12 week kind of a mark. We usually see the Mm -hmm. other changes first, weight starts to come off, energy starts to increase. Um, and yeah, that's sort of what would be expected most of the time. Yeah. So, so the big thing that's really bad is the processed sugar. Yeah. That seems to be the big one. If you can get away from the processed sugar, then that will at least be a start. I would yeah. think before they get to see you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like if they, uh, you know, if they're waiting to see you and get onto a program, I guess something that, that, that we should all think about is the sugar content in everything. It's everywhere. It's awful. Yeah. It's awful. It, it's addictive. It, 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 just like salt. Yeah. I know that uh, because you have to have some kind of salt, but I know salt is in everything, uh, like canned tuna, yeah. things like that. Something that you think would be so, so good for you, and it's got salt in it. So let's talk about salt for one second. So salt, absolutely a necessity for life. So we want to move <laughs> right. away from table salt. If you want, look up the ingredients of table salt, super processed junk in there that you do not want. So instead, Himalayan sea salt, that's the way to go. Sea salt. Um, there's lots of minerals in there that actually helps your body, supports your body. Uh, um, yeah. Whereas for table salt, a lot of it's been pulled out. They've added sugar, like just good, not good. <laughs> and you know, the thing is with salt, salt is salt. I mean, that's how everybody would think. You know, I mean, you buy a box of salt. You don't think of it as being... Uh, processed so much because you think of it, it just came out of the ground. <laughs> you know, it's it's something natural. It's everything, almost everything that comes in a box, right? But I mean, yes. you can look at foods like ultra processed foods, right? Like an Oreo yeah. cookie or a little bit of a processed food because in real life, it's not like we're going to grow everything outside 20, you know, 300 yeah. days a year, right? But it's more about just being conscious of, well, what's in this box food? Do I really want these 50 ingredients and I can't pronounce 10 of them, right? Just over <laughs> And, or am I going to look at something that has, okay, there's five ingredients in there and I know what they all are. There's nothing yeah. weird in it. Okay, I'm going to eat it. Kind of like that. Well, that's just, there are so many things in our food um, processed in boxes and cans, even canned stuff. Uh, as an example, I had a can of um, artichoke hearts and I thought they were in water and they were in my cupboard and I never really thought about it until I saw that the can had rotted. And I thought, what was it, what was in those artichoke hearts to make this can rot and open up? It was, you know, it had me thinking about 
just what goes on in these cans, you know, and it, it was just, it, like I say, it was already show carts in water. It said water. And uh, obviously there were a lot of preservatives in there to make it go like that. I mean, that was a shock. It, it, uh, it absolutely makes you think about what is in the cans. I mean, it would be nice if we could just grow everything in our garden and do it that way. Uh, unfortunately, we can't. But then again, like you said, it's a balance of, of nutrition, everything. Like, you know, if you're taking vitamins, you got to make sure that they don't interact with another vitamin or a hormone. And um, I know pharmacists are great because they, they're like scientists and that's kind of what you have to get into, I guess, don't you? Uh, it's I kind of a, clients, I'm like, these are all the supplements I recommend. But if you're, you know, if you're on any prescription <laughs> medication, make sure we double check. There's no uh, interactions. <laughs> I, yeah. And that's just it because there are a lot of um, prescriptions and, and really a pharmacist is somebody you could really talk to because of that, because okay. they are. Uh, doctors don't know the same thing, obviously. They don't know what interacts with each other, and, and uh, a pharmacist would. And that's why, yeah, they, that's why once a year, I think they go through all your medications to make sure you're not taking something else besides what is being prescribed to you that could make a difference, you know. I, I mean, there's so many things out there. I, I, well, it's certainly something to think about. <laughs> I mean, uh, I never really thought about it before until I started talking to you about this nutrition thing. And because I'm watching all your videos. Oh, are you? Thank you. <laughs> oh, yes, I got you on my Facebook. Yeah, everybody should do that too. Blackwood Nutrition you, you should, on Facebook because you got all kinds of little Instagram is where even more Yeah. Active. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of little skits. Okay, so that's how they would get a hold of you, Blackwood Nutrition. And that's on Facebook, or, or do you have a webpage? So Instagram, I'm more active on Instagram than Facebook. Um, okay. But my website is blackwoodnutrition.ca or .com. I think it's .com. One of those. <laughs> <laughs> so long ago, it's .ca or .com. <laughs> well, how long have you been doing this, Jasmine? Uh, I've been a holistic nutritionist for two and a half years now. Oh, okay. Good to know. Yeah. And I worked with you all that time and I had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> until I until I saw you on Facebook. Anymore. I don't work I, uh, there anymore. Just do my business. No, now. no, it's just, we we don't work together anymore. But not anymore. Uh, yeah, when we did, I thought, what the heck's all this nutrition stuff? Well, it's been great talking to you about it because I sure didn't know about a lot of things and I know that everybody's always worried about what they're taking in. I mean, like magnesium, like I said, I've told people, take your magnesium because it's very important, very important uh, vitamin. And there are vitamins. I, and I was worried that the nutrition part that you would be eliminating supplements because I, I, I we need things. Yeah. So just to touch on the supplements too, I do feel that supplements can be incredibly helpful but it's just yeah. the supplement. The more important stuff is how am I managing stress, right? Because if we're really stressed out, I mean, that's the start of a lot of hormonal problems, dysregulated yeah. cortisol. If we're not sleeping, if we're stressed out, if we're not eating properly, if we're not doing all those things and we're taking supplements, supplements don't really do a whole lot, right? The supplements yeah. kind of come second, everything else comes first. That's how I approach it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's the it's way to do it. And it is scientific, that's for sure. Yeah. And you can't, like I say, it's like an ast astrology chart. <laughs> you got to work it out that way. I could just imagine well, seeing this on your step, wall. Right? Yeah. yeah, that's that's right. Well, it's been great talking to you again, Jasmine. We haven't seen, great haven't talked you. in a while, so it's nice. And uh, it's a lot of food for thought <laughs> to think about. And hopefully uh, people will realize now that they can get a hold of you and, and see what they can do if they are having some issues. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us or connect with us on social media. Jesse L. Martin is back. Why well, crash a plane that half the passengers survive? That's why you're here. Why would somebody confess to a murder he didn't commit? Why get fancy with poison when you could just shoot the target? It doesn't make sense. I hear people are irrational. I was brought in because I know things about people. Thank you, Professor. <laughs> I'm glad I was able to help. The Irrational.